Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, praise God for, um, for allowing us to be here in the house of worship. Um, it's a blessing. And I pray that as the day, as I pray as the day progresses, um, the Lord will bless us through the Sabbath as we um, seek to keep our minds stayed upon him. And as we begin um, this portion of the day, this portion of the service um, with, the, with, with help, um, I pray that the things brought forth will be a blessing, that we will see them as, um, as, as instruction to, to help us to take care of the house in which we live. So without, with that being said, let us open up with a short word of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this Sabbath day, for allowing us to be here at this time, um, gathered together, and we pray and ask that you be with those who are making their way here as well, that they will get here safely. Please may you bless the, day, the, the, the Sabbath's proceedings, the service, and as we begin, as we begun with the singing, now that we've entered into the next portion of the health service, we ask that you please put your blessing upon us. We ask for the anointing, even the Holy Spirit, that the word spoken will be words in due season, that it will help, encourage, strengthen, enlighten, and bless, and give instructions, O oh Lord. And I pray and ask that you give us the willingness, willingness of heart to heed it. We ask for the blessing and companionship of holy angels, that they'll fellowship with us. May you permit them to flap their wings and scatter the darkness around us. And also empty their holy all into us, dispelling us of error. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, in today's health portion, we're just taking a look at um, some simple little, simple little things um, that, that the Lord would have us um, take, pay close attention to. Um, as you know, given my condition, uh, with my eyes and the inability to see as well, I, as well, as, as, well as I would like, um, I meditate a lot upon my condition and I meditate upon what could what could what I could do better or how I can improve it. And as I was doing so, I think it was this week or uh, last week, might have been last week, um, the Lord brought some simple things to mind and he and he really made some connections to things. Now and I'm just gonna use a simple little illustration to illustrate that to us. And I'm gonna need your help, Mario. You. Um, simple little illustration that the Lord showed and then we're going to take a look at a couple of verses to highlight some, a little bit more simplicity in what the, the Lord is showing. just need you to hold this glass. All right. So um, I'm not going to say much. I'm just going to ask certain questions. So the Bible says that we're vessels, right? What is a vessel anyway? There's, there's a few definitions, but um, when, you, when I hear the right one, I'll go with it. A container? Uh, okay, I, I heard the right one. <laughs> yeah, amen. It's a, con it's a ship container and it's a person even when you look up the definition it tells you that ship contain a person but one of the meaning i never knew that a vessel is also your veins and it's also your your, your everything on the inside that that the blood flows through is, a, is considered a vessel so whenever you read in the bible that god says we, we're a vessel keep the veins in mind because your blood flows through that vessel and the want and the lord wants the life-giving blood to flow through our vessel and when the blood is contaminated in the vessel, the vessel becomes, it, it doesn't become good anymore. It's not helpful to you or it's not helpful to anybody else. And, and there are certain ways which, in which we contaminate the vessel. And so the Lord wants us to keep the vessel clean by keeping the blood clean, by taking care of our blood vessels. If our blood vessels are not well, then we're not gonna, the blood is not going to flow properly throughout the body so that we can produce the work that the Lord wants us to produce. So with that in mind, I, Romario have this cup. And I'm going to pour into this cup this, this, this juice. Can you pour it in? I'll allow you to do it because I don't want to make a mess. Gotcha. Sorry. All of it. What color is this? What color is this? Red. Okay. What is it? What do y'all think it is? Um, cranberry juice. It could be cranberry, but it's grape juice, right? It's grape juice. Now, the juice today, now the juice today how, do, how do they make it? On, from concentrate, how else? What, what do they do to it? They, they take, take the fruit and they squeeze the fruit. They take the fruit, squeeze it. a fruit. Now, that's the good version. Mm -hmm. What's the bad version? They ferment it. They ferment it. What else do they do? They use spoiled fruit. They use spoiled fruit. Yeah. What else? I'm looking for a key one. The People get juice? sick as a result of it when they drink it all the time. They add a whole bunch of sugar. That's what they do to these, these juices. And con, um, what they, what's the word they use? Um, concentrate. Concentrate, but there's another word. I don't, it's off the top, not on. It's concentrate, yes. But they, they add a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. And when you put a lot of sugar into your vessel, what happens to the blood? It becomes bad. It becomes bad. And what does it do to you? 
What, what do you end up developing with a lot of sugar? Do we got to know? Diabetes. diabetes. You end up developing diabetes as a result of too much sugar. But sometimes it, it may not, it may be juices or maybe food. Instead of sugar, they add a lot of this other thing. Mm -hmm. Too much what? It's sugar and something else. Salt. salt. They add too much. And what does, what's too much salt going to do? Hypertension. Hypertension. Too much, too much sugar and too much salt is not good for us. It's just not good for us at all. So I'm going to take this. This is, a, this is some water. Romero, can you put... And now, mothers. This is to the mothers. Before, when, when we know that some juices have too much sugar, what do y'all do to that juice? Why? Why do you add water? Why do you add water? So that the sugar is less. So that sugar... Do you know what the water does to the sugar? It dissolves it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, to, and when you add enough water, you lose all that high potency of sugar. And it balances out the, 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 the juice and the water, and it makes it good for you to what? Drink. Mm -hmm. You're that vessel. The cure for diabetes is just to drink a lot of water. That, that's it. Is everyone following? Yeah. The way you take care of sugar, the same way you take care of the sugar, pour some water in there. I did already. Okay, you yeah, did? The same way you take care of the sugar in this glass so you can drink it, that's what the Lord is saying whenever you're sick with too much sugar in your system. Drink a lot of water and dilute your blood vessel. Dilute the blood with water so that the blood can flow properly throughout the body and give the body as much nutrient as it needs for you to heal from your sickness. It's that simple. Amen. It's really that simple. Okay, um, thank you. You can pour that in because I'm going to drink that later probably. <laughs> okay, so, the, so diabetes or, or even salt, too much salt in the system. Here, can you take this and this cup? Too much salt and too much sugar in the system, the remedy for it is a lot of what? It's a lot of what? Water. It's that simple. It's really that simple. And Val went over the, the importance of water. No, it's very true. When, when, the earth was, when the earth was corrupt with bad thoughts, what did the Lord give to the earth? Water. A lot of water. So what, so what water helps us to have right thoughts? That's what the Lord is saying in that story. Drinking in a lot of water. Drinking a lot of water helps our thinking. It really does. It really does. Pure water. And so I'm going to take that and I'm going to just add this next part to it. And hopefully we can see this as we go along. This, that was just a simple illustration the Lord showed for people with diabetes. But let me ask this next question. What, when do we mostly need water? What, at, at what time do we need it? During the daytime, but what, but what makes the body craves for water? When there's a lack of it. When, when you're what? Thirsty. thirsty, when you're sweating. And what promotes thirstiness and sweating? Heat, Work. Work. Heat what? What's we'll it again? Work. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Someone who has diabetes, too much sugar and too much salt, the best remedy is exercise and water. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. And you know my wife looked it up. You know, she says, Kanal, you know doctors, when people, good doctors. Good doctors, one good doctor she found says, someone with diabetes, they always tell them to drink a lot of water and exercise. And I'm like, but that's what the Bible actually says. That's what the plain Bible literally says. It literally says that, and we're going to prove that at this time. Di the cure for diabetes is just exercise and a lot of water. You drink that, you're on the right course. Yes, there's a few other things with food, and you can prove that from Genesis 2 and 3. You can prove that. Genesis 2 and 3 proves right food heals diabetes. Uh, it, literally, it literally says that. It doesn't say it face value, but it says that. You eat what God says to eat, and you cure diabetes. It says that. You, say it again. All right, let's prove what Swinon just said. It really does. Now, this next thing that I'm about to say, the Lord, I, wanna be, I, want, I, want, I want us to get this. The Lord impressed this up on my heart, and I just want to say this. What I'm about to say, I want to encourage us to remember this. We all have to remember this. It's going to prove valuable. It's going to prove valuable when we do missionary work and even to our own selves. What the next thing I'm about to say, when the Lord opened this up, I couldn't believe how simple it is. Very, it's extremely simple. And if we're not connected to the first, second, and third angel's message, we're not going to understand the simplicity of health. Health is actually very simple. It's extremely simple. It's just Satan that makes it complex and makes us confused concerning it. But it's actually very simple. And we're going to, it's what? Praise God. Keep that in mind. Um, Shayla and, and um, let, me get, let me get Shayla and Aiden. Come, come please. Shayla and Aiden. Now, what is, what is health in relation to the gospel? The right arm. All right. Come here, Shayla and Aiden. Can you see Aiden on camera? No, probably not. Come here. You can see Shayla, right? Of course. 
Shayla, Aiden, raise your right arm. <laughs> Thank you. So Shayla, that's your right arm. Where's their right arm? On the right side. Of the what? Of the body. So wherever Aiden goes and wherever Shayla goes, where does the right arm go? So when I go to the store, where does the right arm go? If I go into the grave, where does the right arm go? If the baby's born, where does it, where's the right arm? So the right arm is always with the body. It's never without the body. Thank you. It's never without the body. What is the Lord showing? Wherever the gospel is preached, if the right arm is not attached to it, you're not preaching the gospel. You're not preaching it. The right arm is always attached to the body. It cannot be separated from the body. It is virtually physically impossible unless it's cut off. So who cuts off the right arm? Satan. He cuts it off. And if the right arm is promoted and not the gospel, you're not preaching the gospel. You're not teaching help. You cannot separate the right arm from the body. Wherever I go, my right arm is with me. So what am I saying? Wherever you read in the Bible about the gospel, you must always see help every time. Every time. Do you know why you don't see it? Because we're blind. We're blind. So let's, let's prove this. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having an everlasting what? The health must be there. It must be there. So let's reread that. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having an everlasting gospel and the health to preach unto them that dwell on the earth to every. That's why Ellen White calls it the healing message, because the right arm is always with the gospel. Wherever Jesus went about preaching the gospel, what does the Bible say he was doing? Healing. healing. He never preached without healing. Never. Not, not on one occasion. On every occasion when Christ preached, he always healed. Do y'all know what the Lord is saying? I'm telling you, he's opening up light on this understanding. When I read it in the Bible and it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be health. And there was health. Amen. Is everyone following? Amen. You can't separate health from light. You can't separate light from health. Amen. You can't do it. Light is for healing. Yes. Amen. Light is for healing. When we see light, always see help. Every time. God never asks us to believe the gospel without healing associated with it. And then he said, then the Holy Spirit told John, John, write this. Um, I, John, third John, Swinon quoted the other, third John. Beloved. I wish above, beloved. I, pro, and being what? You can't separate prosperity from the, from the soul. Even Soul. Prosper it. You cannot. So what am I saying? Brethren, keep our minds open now when we study our Bibles. Whatever part of the gospel we're studying, keep your mind open for God to shed light upon that story in connection with something in regards to health. We will need this for ministering to people when we go out there. Mm -hmm. You can't separate health from the gospel. It's physically impossible. And now let me give you all a clear example of this. Swindon brought up this point. Go to Exodus 15, 26. Can I have a reader for that? Quickly, I don't want to take too long at this point. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give air to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he was thee. There's the, there's the healing message. There it is right there. If you do that which is right, there it is. There's the help. If I do that which is right, God promises I will put none of these diseases upon you that I brought upon the Egyptian. Find the Lord that what? He lift thee. So the Egyptians is not doing what is right. That's why their disease is that simple. They're not exercising to make their body desire water so that healing can take place. They're not doing that. They're not, uh, keep this apart in mind. Hold on to that and run with me to Genesis chapter 2. Let's go read Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And I, I'm, I'm going to center around this part. Genesis chapter 2, verse, we have to remember this. Whenever we study our Bibles from now on, keep in mind that this also has help associated with it because the Bible says where Jesus went preaching, he healed. The Bible is Jesus. And where the Bible is preached, healing must take place. 
the reason healing don't take place is because many of us is not doing that which is right. That's why it's not taking place. We don't know what right is. So the healing that God wants to do can't take place. It can't happen. So something, so we need to know what is right. That's why God connects healing to all the stories, because each story in the Bible tells us what's right. And in that story, based upon the people we come, remember, there's only 10 commandments. And based upon the people we come, ac come across, we need to find out what law they're breaking in their life in regards to God's 10 commandments so that we can show them what is right in relation to the 10 commandments and healing can now take place. Healing can take place. So I often ask the Lord, I do pray, I'm saying, Lord, what commandment am I breaking? What commandment? Sometimes you may not be breaking it because then you have the story of Job to show you that aspect. You're doing what is right. That's why sickness is coming. Is everyone following? Yeah. You're doing, but you need God to help you on that one. That one takes discernment. You're going to need strong discernment to know, to know that. If you don't have the discernment to know good and evil, then you're going to make the wrong decision and continue on breaking this law and think you're keeping it. God said, "Allow." This is where we have to learn. To this is we have ourselves. to to be what? What do we have to be to examine ourselves? Our own what? Doctor. Physician. Yeah, yeah. That's what the Bible's it's given for. Yeah, yeah, that's what the Bible's for. Amen. Amen. That's what the, the Bible is. Our is our health book. That's what it is right there. And every, to know that every story is connected to health is going to prove to be a blessing. I promise you. And here's what the Lord showed: Genesis chapter two, verse sixteen, please. And 17. 16 and 17. 16 and 17, please. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Okay. Okay. So right there. If Adam and Eve did what was right, what wouldn't come? Yeah. Sickness wouldn't come. Before they die, they must be sick. That word, that word um, surely die, means in dying, in being sick, you shall surely die. Is everyone following? In dying, thou shalt die. And freely eat means in eating, thou shalt eat. So the, Lord, so the Lord says, here's how you get better. If you eat the way I say to eat, you'll be better. If you eat what I forbid you to eat, you're going to get sick, and then you're going to die. As a matter of fact, death already begins. All right, so let's go to Genesis chapter 3 now. Go over one chapter and just read, read verse 6, please. Verse 6. And verse when six. the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Stop right there. So when the woman saw what? What did the woman see? Tree what tree was good for food? Did a, okay, okay, so here's, let's read that. Take that text and read it with every bad food in mind. And when the Protestants saw that pork was good for food, they did take it and they eat it. And when, the, when some Christians see that alcohol is good for food, they did took it and they did eat it. And when some Christians see that it's good to fornicate outside of marriage, they did do it and they did live that. And just take that and apply it to every single forbidden thing that God said is wrong and apply it to yourself and see. And now say, is this why I'm sick? Is this why I'm sick? Am I doing? Am, this is how you do your examination. Am I eating what God has forbidden? Am I mixing my carrots with apples? When I know that fruits and vegetables digest that different, they, different thing, they don't digest the same. They don't digest the same, so the Lord says don't do that. If you do that, you're hurting your digestive system, and you're preventing yourself from thinking properly. This is what the testimony says. This is what it teaches. So this is why the Lord counsels not to do that, because it brings sickness. Why? Because God did not say that that was right. He said, this is right. He says, freely do this, and, he, and I can now command healing to take place. Mm -hmm. So Adam and Eve did that which God said not to do. And immediately, right there, that's where cancer entered. Right there. As soon, because the, they became mortal right there. Cancer cells began right where Eve ate. Right there. Yeah. That's where it began. That's the be if anyone wants to know where cancer comes from, it's Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. That's where cancer began. Because the Lord did not make man to have cancer. Cancer is death. 
The Lord didn't make us to have cancer. Man develops cancer by disobedience to wrongful living. That's how you develop cancer. And Eve, they didn't die that day because that's not what the text says. It says, in eating the wrong thing, in dying, you shall die. So you may eat pork today. You may have been eating pork for 20 years and won't see the results until 25 or 35. But you will see a result. And if you die before you see a result, you will see a result in the second life. You got it. Go ahead. Yeah, there is. Um, it's on, right? Yeah. Okay, there is a. Um, um, I'm, you know, as you go in, um, there is a way to live and not get sick. It's still obedience. Amen. Christ didn't get sick. He chose. The Bible says he Praise gave God. up the ghost. Amen. Moses went up on that mount, wide eyes. He gave up the ghost because God said it was time Amen. to give up the ghost. Amen. So there is a way that we can live and not get sick. We will yes, die. There is. Yes, there is. We will die, but we don't have to get sick. Amen. And this, this is the key. You know, what's nice about this, Michelle was just telling me, all week long we were talking about food. And every time she said, I look at her and say, fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. That's the only answer I had for it. Amen. Fruits, nuts, grains, That's and vegetables. That's the best remedy But why this? Why can we don't eat sugar? Fruits, nuts, grains. Where are we going to get sugar? Fruits, fruits. nuts, grains, and Amen. vegetables. Especially it's all the there. That's the only Amen. remedy that we have. And one thing I'm seeing, I hope everybody's seeing it. We are becoming one straight people. Lace people. I, I, I really God. want us to see that. Amen. Every time I think about it, Amen. it's like, man, Lord, there Amen. is nothing we can do that is like the world. Amen. Nothing. Amen. I'm and glad my brother's seeing he, that. He's bringing it up in food, in dress, in Sabbath. And man, it is so... If we don't have proper health, well, it's impossible God. to keep the Sabbath. Virtually, physically impossible. The Lord doesn't want sick people on the Sabbath. Jesus, went, Jesus did his most miracles on the Sabbath to show, I don't want sick people on the Sabbath. Amen. I don't want sick people on the Sabbath because it pollutes the Sabbath. I don't want you to be sick. I want you to be whole. The Sabbath is a sign of whole people. Well, who cut off the right arm? Satan. So what, so what does Christ do if a man don't have a right arm? He heals it. Amen. He heals it. The gospel, he, he gives them what? He gives, he them, gives help. them help. You, we can never preach the gospel without help. We can't do it. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm not sure what, what happened at the beginning because I missed the first few minutes. But um, Praise God for recording. I just say thank God for that, um, for this message this morning because it's been in my heart a lot. Praise God. For the last few months and especially this week. The last two weeks, you know, of us just trying to eat right because I realized that everything we eat is full of sugar. Yes, it is. And sugar is what's killing us. And one of the biggest things that really impressed my heart on that when it comes to sugar is that when we are going out to um, the, um, the free markets the and meeting people in, in different events, and one of the biggest things most people will say to us, oh, I can't have cookies, I can't have this because I have diabetes. And I can't have sugar, and I can't have sugar. I'm like, man, what's going to happen to us? We're going to be just like them, you know? And I kept feeling bad that because of their lives. And they were like, this lady said to me, yeah, I ate really bad. I had a lot of sugar all my life. I know I can't have any, you know? And in, in dying, she shall what? Die. die. Yeah. And why is that? Because she, she was eating forbidden things. Yeah. So with meeting so much people who had diabetes, and recently um, a very close family member of mine, um, two... two um, Friends died, I know, like in the late 40s, late 40s, and with, with that happening, knowing that his life was also, also, he had the same issues with them, heading towards diabetes, um, so young, he changed his diet, and he lost a lot of weight, exercising, and changed Praise his God. way. He lost about, I think, like 40 pounds, and, uh, you know, working out a lot more. So I'm starting to say, with that experience, and seeing him changing, and seeing, I mean, so much people with so much sickness, it really scares me, and as a mom, as a wife, for me, it's like, I got to make sure my family is good. And not just my family, but everyone around us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you start mm -hmm. at home, you know, to, to teach the children, and teach, you know, and also it's my responsibility to cook, cook right at home. So, mm -hmm. and then I was watching some stuff with Aunt Barbara O'Neill, and she was saying that, you know, one of the worst sugars, it's not the sugar we eat, like cane sugar and so forth, it's actually the food, carbohydrates, mm -hmm. whether it's rice, pasta, and all that stuff, it's actually more, it's actually worse. So, so, so when I kept preaching to me, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, and, you know, and it made a lot of sense, you know, how Amen. much of a reform you have to do. And that everything you eat, you have to scrutinize because of what's in it. Amen. You know? And yes, one more thing I want to say. Yes, I know that maple and honey and all that stuff is sugar, but we start to limit ourselves, you know, because the worst piece is the cane sugar. It's always in process. And that's the one, you know, because our body needs to be 
alkaline not acidic, but you start to balance it. And if, you, if it's full, if it's just acidic, guess what happens? You full, you you open to diabetes and cancers and tumors and so much disease because of what you eat. Amen. So now I want to go back to Genesis chapter three to add to some of what Michelle just said about that. Even if we only had pork once, sickness already begun. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. Even if you only ate it one day, it, it, yeah, you, you already, death already began in your system. But praise God, you only did it one day, so you probably only did about three days to reverse it. That's about, is everyone following? Yeah. Three messages reverse everything Adam and, Adam and Eve did. 6,000 years is reversing at just that one time of eating fruit. One time of eating the forbidden thing, 6,000 years of sin. So it's showing us that one time to do something can lead to a lifelong work of healing. It, it will do that to us. And I don't want to give everybody a false hope because I understand a little of, of the God in which we serve. Just because you're sick and you want healing and you do the right thing, you may not get healed. Some people, it's not good for God to raise them up. Because if he raise them up, they'll just go do a worse thing the next time around. That's what, and the example of that is God is going to allow the papacy to come back up a second time. And she's going to do worse the second time than she did the first time. Just to teach us a lesson, this is what will happen if I allow sinners to live on, to, give them, to heal them and to give them a little life. They'll just do worse the next time around. So the Lord may not raise some of us up because of what we would do with that life if he was to give us a new lease of life. It's really awesome to see that. Yeah, it is to save them, and it's to save others and yourself. So the point is, I don't want to give anyone a false hope. The point is, do what's right even if you have to die doing it. Do what's right anyway. Amen. Okay? So I want to... Uh, quickly, please, quickly. Real quick. This, quickly. Uh, this is just really interesting to me because for a long time, uh, you know, I looked at this and I've had conversations about it. Uh, Matthew 5, uh, 30, it says, If thy right hand offend thee, cut Amen. it off. Amen. So it makes more sense now. Get rid of Satan out of your life. Amen. Right. Yes. Cut it off. Yes. Amen. Cut it. You have to cut it off. Amen. Amen. Um, now to go back to what you and Michelle said, I want to wrap it all up in this. Adam and Eve sinned. Remember, we're looking at the Bible now in the light of health. Where the, I want us to really get this, and I'm going to do my best to ingrain this wherever I go. Wherever the Gospels preach, health is right there. The right arm is never without the body unless, like Brother Wesley said, it's cut off. The reason we don't hear it preached the right way, the proper way, is because Satan has cut it off through false health teachers. Amen. There's a lot of false health, health teachers in the Adventist church because they have no first, second, and third. Without the preaching of the first, second, and third, I don't care what health message you teach, it's incorrect. It's not right. It's not right. We need to be reformed in the first, second. That's the correct healing. The first, second, and third needs to first heal the mind so we can have the correct understanding of healing for the body. The mind's got to be healed, and now we're prepared to heal the body. That's how the Lord works. Amen? That's how he works. And, and I just love this. I, there's so many things we can open up, but I just want to go to the remedy. So as I was meditating on, on my condition, the Lord, the Lord just brought to my mind, Canard, the remedy for what you have starts right here in Genesis chapter 3. Starts right. When Adam and Eve sinned, what did the Lord give them? The remedy. The, the, the healing remedy for every sickness on this planet is in Genesis chapter 3. That's what the Lord showed. Genesis chapter 3 has the remedy for every, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, incurable diseases. The remedy is in Genesis chapter 3. If you study it out correctly, it's right there. Let's look at it. Go down, go down to God's counsel to Adam. Go down to his counsel to Adam. Go down to his counsel to Adam and read the counsel to Adam. Here's the remedy for Adam's sickness. I, I, Adam, Adam. Yeah, Genesis 3. The remedy given to Adam. And unto the man, he says, because you hearken unto the what? The, yes, because you hearken unto the, to the, to the voice of your wife. And unto Adam, he said, but thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. 
thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. What did God just do there? What did he just give man to eat for any sickness? The herb. Herb. He just gave man herb for any sickness. Right there. Any sickness you have, find the right herb. It is designed to help you. And you just got to find it. But how are you going to find it? You got to search for it. You got to search for it. You got to seek for it with all your heart because the herb is a symbol of life. The same way we got to search for Christ, we got to search for the right herb. In the right herb is the right remedy for your condition. You just got to search. You got to test. You got to try. You got to taste and see if this herb is good. Amen? Amen. It's the same, the same thing for the gospel. It's the same thing for health. They're not different. It's the right arm. It's not different. We just need to understand how to use our right arm. If we know how to use it, we will better take care of the body, this house in which we live. And the script, the gospel is literally given to us to teach us how to use the right arm. That's the reason for the gospel, how to use the right arm so that we can heal the body. Continue reading, please. Before I read, there's another practical thought in here, you know. It's because the man listened to the woman. Amen. Which means I have to watch what my wife cooks just the same. Praise God. And if she yes. cooks something that I know I'm not supposed to eat, Don't eat I it. shouldn't eat it. Don't eat it. So, Don't eat it. But then the woman also have to become honest and cook that which is, Amen. Which is necessary. Amen. So, so the woman plays the biggest part in the health of the man. The health of the family, the church. And the family as a whole. Yeah. The woman plays the biggest part. Healing mo mostly starts with the woman. How do I know that's true? What does the gospel say? The destruction of a nation is due to his what? Religious, Religious leaders. leaders. The woman. It's the woman that, that, in, that gets the body sick. That's what Genesis chapter 3 teaches me. Yeah. What she introduces in her meal is going to have an effect upon my body. And the reason she puts that in the meal is because of how she's thinking. Amen. If her thinking is wrong, her cooking's going to be wrong. Hmm. If her thought's not right, her food's not right. Mm. So wait a minute. So what's the reason for the people thinking evil continually in Genesis chapter 6? The woman was destroying them by what she cooked. That's what Genesis chapter 3 teaches me. The earth was corrupt because of bad food. Mm. It's not different today. The earth was corrupt because of bad food in Genesis chapter 3. It's not different today. Jesus says, as it was in that day, so it is today. It's food that's corrupting people all over this world. Eating and drinking is corrupting everybody because the right arm has been cut off. Those who preach the gospel is not really preaching the health, and those who preach the health is not really preaching the gospel. So the Lord needs to raise up a people who knows how to use the right arm in connection with the gospel. And now God can send that body of people anywhere because they have the right arm connected with it. Amen? Amen. Last thing for Adam. This is the part I want. This is what the Lord impressed upon me, and I have to start practicing it. And I want in, to encourage it. This is so simple. I want us to see how simple this really is. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. All right. That we could stop right there. Right there. There's the remedy for every single disease on this planet. Exercise. Right there. The Lord says in the sweat. How did Christ heal us? Sweat. He sweat. Mm -hmm. By the sweat of his brow, all diseases was healed. This is everyone seeing that? Mm -hmm. By Christ sweating drops of blood, all sins is forgiven. So what does the Lord say in Genesis chapter 3? The same with physical, physical maladies. If we exercise to the point of sweat, the body begins healing itself. Yes, and herbs. I don't want us to miss this. I really don't. We have to exercise to the point of sweat because when we exercise and sweat, guess what the body now needs? Water. And it removes what? Toxin. There's the remedy for every... I don't care if you can't walk, find a way to sweat. I don't care if you, if you can't... If your head hurts, find a way to sweat. If you got diabetes, sweat. If you have AIDS, sweat. You have cancer, sweat. You have syphilis, sweat. Is everyone following? Whatever sickness you have, get out and walk. 
Go walk in the light and produce, make your body sweat. I, when I saw it, I'm like, Lord, I can't believe it's that simple. Exercise is one of the biggest things to being healed. Biggest things to being healed because that's what the Lord, he said, at the sweat of your brow, you're going to eat. Adam's remedy was in working and drinking water. That was his remedy. And then I said, Lord, that you showed that, then what is Eve's remedy? How do I understand that one? What does that one have to do with health? How is taking care of the children healing to the mother? How does that heal? Is everyone following? There's a health message in the remedy given to the woman. That's a, you can't separate the, the right arm from the body. You can't. In every message in the Bible, the health is there. But our minds must be opened up to the communication God is going to give us when the right time comes. Remember, light is given at the right time. We just need to have this on the, it because it's what? It comes in the morning. It the comes, light, light comes, amen. At the right time. Comes when you need it. Yep. It comes when you need it. So because we have this understanding, when we go somewhere and someone's in need, man, if we ask the Lord and he chooses to give light upon that case, he'll bring us to a story in the Bible. Yep. He says, do this. And it'd be so simple. You know what he showed with that? Goliath is a huge disease. Yep. And David took the simple stone from the water to destroy that disease. Simplicity destroys disease. Simplicity. You, you can go on for days studying like this. God made man from the dust of the ground. So you know what the Lord showed through that? Eating foods like, like um, potatoes, yams, cassava, that's the best food for the body for this because they stay in the dirt. So when we eat that, they help this earthly body. And then the Lord breathed into man. So you know what the Lord is saying? Fresh air is the best remedy for the mind. Yeah. That's the best food for the mind, fresh air. Amen. So if you want to help the body, eat ground provisions. That's the best food to heal the natural body. I think if we have cuts and lesions, eat a lot of ground provisions and watch that stuff probably go away. Watch it probably go away. All them burn marks that people have, I bet if they just consume, just, just dedicate their lives to eat on a lot of ground provisions, I can only imagine the healing that starts taking place if the, if the Lord allows it. I can just imagine because that's what ground provisions does. That's literally what it does. And if a person is mentally ill, bring them to the mountains. Let them go breathe the fresh air. If someone has a mental issue, bring him to the mountain. The, the How do I know that? Because there was a mental boy at the bottom of the mountain. Where did Jesus go? Up to the mountain to get fresh air to come back down and heal him. Yeah. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. Fresh air is the best thing for mental case. Go ahead, Val, and we'll close out there. I was going to say the, the herbs are, are also the greens. They're not just the medicinal herbs, but it's say showing the, that. Is the grains? Greens. Oh, greens, okay. And so those things, even, even in the greens itself, it, it, it's likened unto our blood, the chlorophyll that is in it. Amen. So just as it includes that, we need to include that as well, along yes. with the, the foods of the earth. So blood disease, things. eat a lot of greens, basically. Amen. Blood disease, eat a lot of greens and sweat. And sweat. We cannot eliminate. I'm telling you, the eight laws of health is right there in Genesis chapter 3. All of them. They're right there. They're all, that's why, that's why Ellen White can say that, and Swindon said that's what Ellen White says. That's what the Bible says. Ellen White said it because the Bible literally says it. Do you know why we don't see it? Because we need the gospel. It's the gospel. Remember this point. Wherever we see the gospel, health is right next to it. The, re, the only reason we see it is because we're born again. Those who are born again are the ones that God gives this kind of knowledge to. Why? Because we will make right use of it by his mercies. That's what the Lord expects us to do. Make right use of this knowledge in which he's given to us today. And when we leave here, my prayer is that we don't forget this. When we read in our Bibles, remember, help is right next to that story in which you're studying in the Bible. It's right there. Amen. And if the Lord desires to give you light on health, he will give it to you if it's needed. Don't, don't think he's, don't make stuff up. You don't need to. When it's needed, he'll give it. And what he said to me as I medita meditated upon my condition, he says, Canard sweat. He told me, and I, and I said, Lord, help me to start sweating. Help me to start exerting my body to the point where, where I, I sweat and hopefully taking a lot more water into my system. Go ahead. In regards to what you were saying earlier about light being health, 
in Psalms 119, verse 105, oh, 105 it yeah. says, Thy word is a lamp Amen. unto Amen. my feet and a light, and a light or mm -hmm. health Amen. unto my path. Amen. There's another verse that says that. God sent his word and healed them. There's a word that says that. Light is his word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a what? Light. God sent his help and healed them. The gospel and health, they're, they're, they can't be separated. They just can't be separated. And I, I pray that today as we leave here, we really will keep this in our mind. The reason why I keep stressing that is that whenever we go somewhere, our minds is open up when we run into somebody sick. Our, we're in a place where God can give you flashlight into your mind on a story that will probably help that person. And there, you just stretch your hand out to him to bring him out of the water and now bring him into the boat, into the ship, into the gospel. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's what the Lord expects us to do with this right arm, man. Go out there and heal people. Go out there, but we got to be in the right place and our minds got to be opened up for that light to come in so that we can help that. That's what Jesus did. That's what we must do. We can't do anything different than our master. Amen? Amen. We can't. So let us copy our master. That's what he left for us to do and we got to do it. We got to do it. But we got to keep our minds opened up to heaven like his mind was opened up to heaven. Amen? Amen. So let us close out with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I really want to thank you, Lord, for making the gospel and health so simple. Lord, is when we, make the, when we go outside of the bounds of your word, they become complicated and hard to understand. But Lord, it really is simple, O oh Lord. And, and I, Jesus, you said your yoke is easy and your, your, your burden is light. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for, for this light burden and easy yoke. Please help us to wear it. Your commandments is not bondage, O oh Lord. The right way to live is not bondage. It, it's easy. It's pleasant. It's pleasing to those whose hearts are changed. And I pray and ask the Lord that you help, that you will create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Please forgive us of our sin. Please forgive us of neglecting to take care of this house in which we live in, O oh Lord, that's, that's, that, that all these maladies are upon us. Show us the right way, O oh Lord. Show us the right way in regards to, to health along with the gospel. As you're showing us the gospel, you're showing us the right way in regards to healing. And Lord, we just haven't been paying attention because we've been fulfilling that prophecy of being blind. But Lord, we ask that you open up our eyes, open up our understanding. We want to be healed. And if it can glorify your name, please give us a new lease of life. Raise us up to good help. Oh Lord, help us not to forget these simple little instructions which you give to us. Help us to follow them, oh Lord. Follow them out to their logical conclusions so that we can taste and see, and see that God is really good in regards to the gospel and help. Be with the next presenter coming up, oh Lord. Bless the, the remaining proceedings. I pray that the way is prepared. That the, heat, the, the gospel, the, the health message, the entering wedge here has prepared the way for what's about to be preached. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.